Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our sequences series with video 13 looking at complex questions from past exam papers. In this particular video you're going to find a worked example from 2020's Queensland External Exam Paper 2, that was the complex paper, and then we'll have a quick chat about what's coming up in our future videos. And this particular video is aimed at our Year 11 and 12 General Math students and Math Method students right across Australia, Victoria, Queensland, uh, South Australia, Tasmania and Western Australia for all of those that are studying sequences and series. There is some also common application here as part of the Grade 9 and 10 ACARA Australian Curriculum Syllabus as well for the first part of the solution of this question. So it may also be useful for some of your junior students. Okay, let's look at the question that was on Paper 2 of the Queensland exam in 2020. Question 1 says, a water tank contains 12,500 litres of water. The tap is accidentally lent, left on and the tank loses 135 litres per minute. The tap is turned off when the tank has 5,000 litres of water left. Use a mathematical model to determine how long the tap was left on to the nearest minute. So this was the very first question students were faced with in this paper two, which was the complex paper for Queensland. And you can see that it's worth a total of five marks. This means it's actually worth 5% of paper one and two combined. And because in Queensland, the maths exams are worth 50% of your ATAR result for maths, that means it's worth a whopping 2.5% of your overall result across the two years. So it's a pretty important question. We want to make sure we can access all five of those marks. So let's look at how that's done. So firstly, I want to unpack a really critical part of this question, and that is this part that I've got in the box here. Use a mathematical model. Now, I actually did this question with one of my classes and a lot of students did not know what use a mathematical model means. A lot of them were puzzling their heads and trying to work out what was being asked of this in this question. Now, I actually put this out in a survey to a couple of my other classes and asked them, what do you think is meant by use a mathematical model? Now, 50% of students thought that they would need to create an algebra expression and 50% thought they would need to do something else, whether that was drawing a picture or drawing a graph. Well, in fact, in the QCAA answer sheet, you needed to use algebra in order to be able to get full marks. There was no marks awarded for a graph and no marks awarded for a picture, even though those could be helpful tools. So 50% of students that I surveyed, so a total of about 80 altogether, thought that they had to do something that would have awarded them no marks. So it's really important to understand what's being asked of you when you're being asked to develop a mathematical model. We'll talk a bit more about that as the video goes on. Now, I then told students that they're actually provided with three quarters of an A4 page of lined space. They weren't actually provided with any graph paper whatsoever. And I asked them if this would have changed their answer. Well, 83% of students, so bear in mind that 50% thought they had to draw a graph, 83% of stu students still stood by their guns and thought that they wouldn't have to do anything other than draw a graph. So that's a bit of a concern as well because typically the amount of space that you're given or the type of space that you're given in an external exam or even a normal exam is a good indicator of what the markers are looking for when you provide your answer and what's going to be awarded marks. So if you're not given graph paper, then that's a good clue to you that you probably aren't going to need to draw a graph for your final solution. Now I asked students to, in a comment, if they, if it did change their mind to give me their thoughts on what they were thinking about when they came to their answer. And one student said, yes, it would change their answer because that would tell them now that there's an explanation that's required in words. Now this can also be a little bit tricky for students as well. Sometimes in mathematics, when they see a lot of line space, students may be under the misunderstanding that they actually need to write an essay in this space. A mathematical model is not an essay. And yes, there may be some explanation in words, but when you've got that much space, it tells you you probably need to do a fair bit of working as opposed to a fair bit of writing. So just bear that in mind as well. Student two felt like they felt like they would need to fill the space. Um, didn't say whether that meant that they would then fill it up with a drawing or a graph. Student three said clearly they needed a worded response, similar to what student one has said. So yes, there would be some words involved, but we're not necessarily writing essays in mathematics. So just be careful of that, unless you're writing a PSMT, of course. 
Student 4 said, I believe a mathematical model may consist of more than a graph. Well, yes, you are absolutely correct. It does involve developing an algebraic expression. We'll talk more about that shortly. And student 5 said, yeah, I would probably draw a picture of something. Okay, well, not really what we were looking for there. And student 6 said, yes, I think we may need it to draw a graph or a diagram. So some common misconceptions here about what that mathematical model means. Let's go back to the question. So in this particular question, we're actually going to have to develop some algebra. We're going to have to unpack the words in this particular question. And let's do that using C plan do check, which is Polly's problem solving model. So we're actually going to highlight the key information here. Firstly, we know that it starts with 12,500 litres. That's the maximum that this tank can fit. Now, it's not relevant what's going on with the tap, but we know that the tank is losing 135 litres per minute. Now, the word per tells us that it's a rate. So something per something, like kilometres per hour, litres per minute, that's a rate. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. That's important. We also know that we've got 5,000 at the end. So that's where we're going to be stopping with the leaking. And then we've got this information here. We need to make sure our final answer is given to the nearest minute. So we need to make sure we come back to the information. Now, I see a lot of people when they're doing their seeing and their planning, they do a lot of highlighting. They pretty much highlight everything. You only really need to highlight the important things that you want to make sure that you are critical for you to solve the problem and that you need to remember as you go. Okay, so we've got to come back to the idea of drawing a graph or a sketch. It could help you. But in the actual marking scheme, the QCAA didn't award any marks to a graph or a sketch. It could help you though to be able to solve the problem and understand what's going on. So I always say if you need to draw a picture, draw a picture. The lack of graph paper, as we mentioned earlier, also indicates that it's not necessarily going to be the best approach. And I'll like unpack that why a bit more in a minute. So now I've graphed this using Microsoft Excel. So Yes, a sketch can help a little bit. It can show you what's happening to the volume of the water over time. But as you notice in the graph, it's a long time before it actually hits 5,000 litres. And it's going to be pretty difficult for us to work that out by reading off a graph. And I think that's intentional to guide you towards moving away from using a graph and moving towards using an algebra expression. Drawing this as a graph would be very difficult for a few reasons. But firstly, because that initial volume of 12,500 is so different to our rate of change, which is the 135 litres per minute, it makes it really hard for you to get a precise gradient while you're drawing. So yes, you can use a little quick sketch, but it's not going to be super useful. In fact, in my opinion, this is the kind of situation that would be best graphed using technology, not graphed by hand because of the difficulty in the scale. Okay, one thing that this sketch does reveal to us, and if you did do a rough sketch by hand, is that it shows you that that Y intercept at time zero, the volume, is 12,500. Now you could actually unpack that without looking at the graph or without even drawing a graph. So if you're actually reading the question, to draw the graph in the first place, you need to have an understanding that 12,500 is your amount at time zero. And then to go and draw that on a graph would just be wasting a lot of time in my opinion. The slope, though, is important. The slope is negative gradient, and so that's something important because the tank is losing water. And so seeing that, that slope going in that direction might give you that little hint towards M, your gradient being a negative number. Now, that water loss, we talked about that rate of change earlier. Now, a rate of change is also equal to a gradient. So we normally think of gradients in terms of slope. Is the slope steep or is the slope shallow? But something you need to be aware of as well is that a gradient is actually a rate of change. So in this particular case, we can see that it'd be very hard to graph that 135 as our rise or our drop over one as our run. Quite hard to do that in that kind of a scaling. Okay, so we're now going to use an algebraic expression in the form of y equals mx plus c. Now, this first way that I'm doing this particular example is more appropriate if this was a question on a grade 9 exam, a grade 10, or even a year 11 general or math methods exam. Because in grade 11, 9, and 10, we use y equals mx plus c to graph, and we also use it to solve simple problems. And this is a relatively simple problem. It is part of the year 9, 10, 11 syllabus. I'm going to show you an alternative method in a moment using sequences and series, which is what this series is all about. So let's go with this one. The QCAA in Queensland did actually award full marks for using this method of y equals mx plus c. 
but there are some specific things that they wanted to see before they would award full marks. So let's see where those marks are awarded. Firstly, we've substituted in our gradient, what um, m equals minus 135, and we've got our intercept of plus 12,500. That was our starting point. And we've got a statement of variables. Notice here that this is what the QCAA awarded the marks to, stating your variables. So we've developed an equation, but it's really important to explain what those values mean, that your gradient is negative 135, your intercept is 12,500, what Y means, what X means. That was awarded one mark. So if you didn't state your variables, you're already robbing yourself of a half a percent of your overall maths ATAR marks. Okay, you can see there's a second tick there where y is equal to 5,000. So understanding that 5,000 is going to be the subject of the equation because that's the point we want to get to after so many minutes, that's also worth a mark. Okay, next step is we're going to substitute all of our information into the equation. That simple substitution step was also worth a full mark. So very important that we're doing our algebraic development in the right way. Now we're going to solve it for x. So I'm going to take 12,500 from both sides, which will give me minus 7,500 on the left-hand side. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 135. And some students may make a little mistake here and forget that it's negative divided by negative gives you a positive number. So we end up with 55.5555 repeater. That was worth another mark. So there's our third mark, four, fourth mark right there. Okay, now we need to go back. So we've done the C, we've done the plan, which was our planning was thinking about how to develop that model. We've done do, which we've actually solved it. Now we need to check. And if we look in our last box for check, we want to find out this to the nearest minute. That means we need to round up to 56 minutes and write a statement. And that statement rounded to 56 minutes was worth the final mark out of five. So you can see it's very important to check your work afterwards. I would be recommending in this that you just check through all that highlighted information and make sure that it's logical, that um, you could see from the graph that it was definitely a long time. Maybe substitute 56 back into the equation, see if you get 12,500, so working backwards. Now let's look at how we would do this problem if we were thinking with the mindset of a year 12 student thinking about sequences. So firstly, we're going to consider this is a sequence. There's a starting amount, which would be term one, and we've got this amount of change, and that's a fixed figure. It's not a percentage, it's a fixed number. Therefore, it's going to be an arithmetic sequence. So we're applying our understanding of sequences to a particular situation. It's kind of like depreciation, really, except we've got water being lost out of a tank. So it's an alternative, different context. Okay, now that we know that it's a sequence and it's an arithmetic sequence, we can move to our formula sheet and we're going to state some variables first before we write our rule. Time, um, Tn is the amount of water in the tank at n minutes. N is the number of minutes that the water is leaking from the tank. Term 1 is equal to 12,500. And D, our common difference is equal to minus 135. So stating the variables here again, worth a mark. I guarantee you lots of students did not state variables because we're often a little bit lazy like that. So be very careful. State your variables anytime you need to use a formula. Next step was write that rule for an arithmetic sequence. Not awarded any marks. Okay, so just be aware of that. Step three, substitute into the rule, develop the method. Now, that means we're actually putting all of those variables that we developed into that algebraic expression, the rule from our formula sheet for an arithmetic sequence. Now we're going to solve it using and trying to find n using our algebraic transposing techniques. So we're gonna take 12,500 from both sides. We'll get minus 7,500 on the left-hand side. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 135 and I'm left with n minus one is equal to minus 7,500 divided by 135. N minus one equals 55.555, therefore N equals 56.55555 into infinity. Now you might be wondering and scratching your head and saying, hang on a minute, when we did this with the gradient intercept method, we actually got a different answer. We got 55.555, not 56.555. Now, the reason for that is that our first term in this case, we've called our first term 12,500. Whereas in reality, term at time zero 
is actually 12,500. So we actually need to take it back a minute in our final solution. Let's think about that. The tap was left on until the 57th term. The first term was time zero. Therefore, the 57th term will be 56 minutes. So we need to take it back one. Have a think about that one. So we've just got that balance that we've got to juggle. Kind of like when we did all our depreciation questions, we had to start it with time zero and we didn't do the N minus one. But if we substitute straight into the rule and use N minus one, then we need to consider that we need to go back a term. Well, we have got through that complex question. Did it all in one take too. Yay me. What's coming up? Well, some more complex questions. I'm going to do a couple more from some of our past papers, some from Western Australia and some from Queensland. Then I'd like to say again, a big welcome to all of our subscribers. Thank you so much for joining us at the channel. We're up to over 970 as we speak. And yes, it is a Brr, a chilly day here in Queensland. I know it's snowing in other parts of the country as I speak and maybe whatever year it is, whenever you're studying sequences, it's going to be cold there too. So make sure you rag up and stay safe. Follow McClutchy Maths on Facebook. It's a great place to find out when the next video is out. Also some tips, tricks and a great way to contact us as well through Facebook Messenger. And if you're not on Facebook, then why not contact us via email if you've got any questions or concerns. Please be aware that I don't give out advice on um, drafts uh, or draft feedback for people because that would not be professional, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions about any videos that I've created and also for you to give me some ideas about what you would like to see. And then we're almost wrapping up this series, so I'd love to hear what you want to hear next. Is there a particular topic that's vexing you? Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Natalie McClutchy and you've been watching McClutchy Maths. Have a wonderful day.